Hello, uh, today we're going to be doing something a little similar to that last video, uh, but drawing in the opposite direction. Um, so last time we were multiplying a matrix by a vector to get a new vector. And um, so we had some equation like this, something like ax, um, a, a times x equals b. Um, I'm not explicitly showing it, but when I put ax together like that, what I mean is that we're doing the dot product of those two. Um, so what were these uh, values? The A was the matrix of features that different houses had, and we were pulling that straight from a data frame. Uh, X uh, was this vector of coefficients. Um, those were our modeled parameters. And so given that, given some data and our model parameters, um, those were both known, oh, excuse me, uh, we were able to compute this third column of our price estimates. And here I'm calling that B. Last time I actually used B to represent something else, so don't let you mix that up. Don't get confused by that, but B are these um, prices that we were estimating based on the data A and the coefficients X. Okay, so this time we're going to do something different. Um, we're going to say that uh, we know what A is, right? So we know all these features of the houses. And let's say B is no longer an estimate, but it's the actual prices that are known. How can we infer what X should be? How can we solve uh, for X in this equation? Okay. So I'm going to uh, import the data here. So I have the houses here. And so you can see we have um, the values for A, these first three columns. Uh, B is this last column, right? The, the thing that we uh, are most interested in. And how can we figure out what X is? Because X is what's trying to tie together A with B, right? So we want to work backwards. Now, we could assume different models or kind of different relationships between these columns, uh, but we're going to assume a linear model. And so what that means is we're going to assume that there's some x values that work out like this. Um, I multiply the first column by x0, I multiply the second column by x1, the third column by x2, and then um, and I add all those things up, and then I also add in some constant factor, and that's the price. That's the equation um, we're working with. And, uh, and, and so if that's the base equation that I'm assuming, that's my model, uh, it, it turns out, well, I can actually get a lot of equations like that. Every row in my table turns out to be an equation, right? Because I have different values for beds and baths and so on, right? So I see that uh, two times x zero plus one times x one plus 1985 times x two um, plus one times x three uh, equals, 196.55. So I get this equation right here, right? That's the first, it's based on both this equation and that first row in, in my table, right? My, my second equation is also based on, on this general equation and the second row in my table, right? So I, I kind of crunch all this out. And what do I end up with? I end up with uh, four equations and four variables, right? I have my x0, x1, x2, and x3. And so you might remember from high school that, hey, if I have four equations and uh, four variables, I have some hope um, of solving for those variables, right? And I, and I expect that this is the kind of, if I give you these four equations, it might be painful and take a while, but you should be able to solve those, right? We should be able to do things like, you know, subtract one equation from another one, right? We could simplify down. Um, it's not always the case, but at least in this case, and, and in most cases where we have four equations and four variables, we can solve for those, right? If we had um, if we had more more equations than we had variables, then uh, then we'd be in trouble. Or if we had uh, more, if we have either more variables or more equations, right? It's not necessarily going to uh, work out. It probably won't, in fact. But here it will. And rather than do all the uh, math from scratch, what I want you to notice is that. Uh, solving this is the same thing as solving these equations down here, right? And and the good thing is is that there's a very nice NumPy module or function that's going to solve that for us. Okay, so so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to kind of break this up. So uh, I have uh, oh, I need to get my A matrix, right? So I'm going to say A equals data frame that values. You get that and um, I'm sorry, my data frame is called houses. I do that. And, and, and that's not quite right because I have my prices here, and right? I wanted all the columns except that. I'm going to slice it, 
So I have my row slice and my column slice separated by a comma. Um, I want all of the rows and all except the last column. So I'm going to do that. And, um, and, and remember how I have to have that column of ones? So I, I can do that as well. Let me, let me think about how to do this. So I have my np.ones and, um, and I can get four ones there. And, um, and what I want to do is I want to kind of tack this on at the end, right? So I'm going to say, I'm going to say something like this. I'm going to say uh, np.concatenate a with some ones. And, and this is not really working out because, well, for one, I, I have to do it um, horizontally, right? So I have to say axis equals equals one. And then, and then this piece, these ones here have to be uh, pointed down, right? I need a vertical thing, right? I'm trying to add a column at the end. I say that reshape. Um, I want one column, right? So I'm going to do that. And um, uh, you know what my real problem is? Is that I have to pass in a tuple of the things I'm concatenating, right? So I pass in all the things I'm concatenating in a list or a tuple, and then there, there I go. I actually get what I wanted. So, so let me let me grab this piece, right, and put this back here. A equals that. Okay, now I have a. And then, and then what about B, right? So B is the thing we're trying to predict, and that is this last column. I'm pulling that out separately. So it's going to be pretty similar to this, right? Except, um, except instead of getting things before the last column, I, I do want to have the last column, right? So that's going to give me this two by two vertical. I might put B here, like so. Right, so let me just go back to that equation one more time, right? So I have A set up and I have B set up. How can I get my model uh, parameters, right, by solving this system of equations? So there's this very nice function in, inside the NumPy module and inside of this linear algebra submodule. And, uh, and it's called, just called solve. And actually, this is a cool trick I, I, I found from the reading I assigned you. We put a question mark after that. Um, it will tell us what the uh, what the function does, right? It's solving systems like this, ax equals b. And so we pass in a, we pass in b, and then it returns x. Okay, so let me close this. So I want to solve a and b, and that's going to give me back x. But by, by convention here, um, I'm using capitals for my matrices, and uh, my 2 by 2 matrices, and I'm using... Uh, lowercase letters for my vectors. I run that and I see, um, sure enough, I actually get these values that we had last time. Maybe, maybe if I convert that to a list, it'll be a little bit um, easier to see. But these were absolutely those values we had last time um, in our model.